Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have a very quick tutorial slash introduction to an awesome piece of software out there called Magicka CSG. Now if you're a regular channel, you probably caught the news back in uh, May, May 21st specifically, the maker of Magicka Voxel released a new piece of software. Now if you've never checked out Magicka Voxel, it is an awesome voxel based modeling application. But now what we're moving on into the world of signed distance field 3D modeling, and you can sort of think of this in the CSG is the key part. Constructed of solid geometry. It's a way of modeling basically using primitive shapes. By adding and subtracting them together, you can make some really interesting shapes. Now, their initial release was a 0.0.0 release, and sadly, this is for Win64 only, although I do understand that it runs fine on Linux under Wine and other options. Uh, the kicker here is that 0.0.0 release had one major flaw and the 0.0.1 download is now available. And that difference is huge. If you saw my original hands-on video with Magic of, of Magic of CSG, I'm gonna do that so many times, with Magic of CSG, you saw it was really awesome, but a very limited use. Because here you can see, this is the export tab from before. And before, all you could do was export out images. Well now, Let's head on over to Magic of CSG. We will take a look at the export tab, and now you'll see you can export out your mesh. That is a huge difference because now you can actually get your creations out of Magic of CSG and into Blender, which is what we're going to showcase how to do today. Uh, so here you can see Magic of CSG in action. As I mentioned, this is made basically by compounding shapes, adding or subtracting them together. You can see over here, this is one of the defaults that's built in. This is Splatoon. And you can see here, it is made up of various different layers, head and body, eyes, mask, hair, a hat, arm and leg, and I know you probably can't see it because unfortunately it does not support high DPI devices very well, so I'm going to zoom this in so you can see what I'm talking about. The clothing, the shorts, and the shoes are all combined out of compound objects. So each one of these things is made up of a number of different strokes. So for example, if we go back to the arm and leg, you're going to see that there are a number of different pieces that go together. So you can see here you see this cube, and we'll grab it and move it, and there you can see. So you can see how these things, you basically create the arms out of uh, boolining these multiple different objects together. So you're kind of working with virtual clay, simple shapes and so on. And now what we can do is go ahead and export this project out. So you go here to the export tab right there, click export, and then pick where you want it to be. You'll notice it export out as a PLY file. And I gotta warn you straight up front, it isn't going to be small. In fact, here it is, and let's find out how big that file is. All right, so here we can see the exported file is 365 megabytes in size. That is because sign distance fields aren't using um, polygons in a traditional sense. So basically, the way that this mesh is stored is not as a mesh. It is as a gigantic point cloud. So you're going to have some issues in that regard. But now we're going to go ahead and import this into Blender. Nice thing is the PLY format is supported out of the box. So let's go here. Let's kill our default cube like we always do. We will go here, file, and then we will do an import, and we will do a Stanford PLY file, find our document, and open it up. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, this is a 365 megabyte file, so this is going to take a small amount of time, so I will catch you on the flip side. So do be aware, this is going to take up a fair bit of time, and it is going to take up a fair bit of, oh, no, not memory. I thought this was killing memory, but when I when I tried to remesh this, wow, did it ever use up memory. So we'll let this go ahead and do its thing. Um, we're gonna import it in. It takes, like I said, a little bit of time. So we're gonna sit here. It's not really a fun video to watch the, uh, the circle spin, so I'll be right back. All right, so here we are uh, several minutes later. It took about five or six minutes, I think, total for that to finish. And as you'll notice, the results look amazing. Actually, the results are not on screen. There's a couple of things we need to do here. First off, you're gonna notice Splatoon was imported. It is available, it is right here. Another thing you may notice, especially if you have uh, scene information turned on down here, it's 9.5 million vertices or 4.7 million triangles in size. But where the heck is it? Well, it's actually, uh, uh, here. So you're gonna see it is a very large object to start with. To fix that, very easy in Blender, just hit the S key for scale and then type 0 
enter. And what we just did is scaled it down to 1% of its size. Now I'm just gonna move it over a bit. I do not know why we have this one rogue pixel off here to the side, so it's kind of throwing off where the center of balance is, but we just scaled that down. We still have a really ultra dense mesh here. You're going to have to retopologize this thing in some way, shape, or form. You could use the built-in decimate feature of Blender, or you could use something like instant meshes. Uh, meshes. Uh, there are tools out there for doing retopology. I'm not gonna cover them today, but don't let the whole giant polygon level get to you. You could also just retopologize it manually uh, by painting a new mesh over top, but not the topic for this video. Just know there is a lot of technology out there for taking a really dense mesh and making it much more usable. All right, so there we now have our uh, object inside of Blender. All that we have left to do now is to color it. So we go here and we, we actually render this guy. You're gonna notice not looking so great. And this is a fairly straightforward process. And I got this from someone else. I will give you the link that showed me how to do this in just a second. But what we're going to do is create, with the Splatoon character selected, create a new material like so. And it will create it like that. It is using nodes. We're just gonna go ahead and open up a new window. That window is the shader editor. And here is the shader for our guy. What we're going to do is just add a new input of type attribute like so and drive this into the base color of our mesh. And the key thing here, and this is case sensitive by the way, is type col in the attributes name, and it will pull the color data in from the uh, vertex information and use it in Blender. So there you go, you've got your, um, your uh, Magicka CSG model exported out in PLY format, imported into Blender, and textured as it is. Now what you'd want to do at this point in time, you're going to want to bake this out to texture maps. You're going to want to retopologize the mesh and you can get your workflow down. The both of those things shouldn't take a huge amount of time or you could export it out to an intermediate format like OBJ and then have, um, you know, use a third party tool for doing this stuff. There's like a Marmoset tool bag, for example. There are all kinds of tools out there for uh, base uh, for baking down uh, texture maps and for uh, baking down uh, or retopologizing meshes. So those are not something we're going to talk about today. I've covered a couple of them in the past. Instant Meshes is one I recommend you check it out. It's free and open source. And if you have an interest in that particular topic being covered, do let me know and I will cover maybe um, texture baking and retopologizing in Blender in a separate video. But if you search, you'll find all kinds of information on both those subjects. The big thing I want to talk about today is basically getting this to this. And the big thing you're seeing difference is just the lighting model that has been set up. So uh, definitely uh, an interesting uh, feature here. It's nice to go uh, uh, between the two. One of the big limitations of Magicka CSG in the past was there was no way to actually get your work out. And that has definitely changed here with this mesh export. Again, your mesh file is gigantic. Uh, but that you can deal with. You can now use this as a modeling tool and the results can be reworked. Just know that you're gonna have a little bit of pain dealing with these large uh, file formats, uh, but definitely the addition of this one new feature really changes the value of Magicka CSG. And again, we're only at a 0.01 release now. So expect, you know, potentially they could do some of this uh, functionality for you in the future. It might be a ability to bake the textures directly from Magicka CSG or export as OBJ format or whatever. Hopefully that kind of stuff comes soon. But the fact that we now have that one export feature in there is awesome. And as I mentioned earlier on, the whole thing about, first off, I didn't know that this functionality was added. I saw this on Twitter. Uh, this is the instructions I found for actually setting up that color attribute. Would have never known that otherwise. A very simple process in the end. Uh, but special thanks to Adam or Ty for actually uh, tweeting this one. Uh, so that's where this information came from. If you want to learn more, I'll link that tweet in the linked article down below. And also on Twitter, do check it out. Uh, search for the tag uh, Magicka CSG, and you're gonna see some really interesting creations, some of the stuff that you can do with it. Uh, some people have done some wonderful work with it. You've got a lot of these slicing things here, which is actually quite cool. So you're seeing people doing interactive cutouts of stuff. It's a number of things people have modeled using Magicka CSG uh, is pretty cool. And the ability to uh, do the marching cubes export that was done on June the 12th. So I missed out on that one uh, the couple of days ago. So I guess I, it wasn't that long ago, uh, but that addition, that new functionality is huge because again, it does enable you to get your works out of Magicka CSG, but you can see some of the things that people have created using this. And the cool thing about the sign distance field way of working or the CSG way of working 
is you're working with just primitive shapes, building them together, cutting them, adding them together, cutting them apart. And that's, that's a pretty intuitive way to work, especially if you're not really into 3D in the first place. But you can see there are some really cool things people have done with Magicka CSG. And the very cool thing is now you can actually get some out, exported, huge chain game changer. It makes this a genuinely useful tool for people now instead of basically a uh, toy that's under development. So uh, that is a cool new process and it's neat that you can now export them into Blender as I've showcased how. And once again, special thanks to uh, Adam or Ty. I would have never gotten the color attribute part down right. And that makes it so much more useful. So anyways, that is exporting from Magicka CSG over to Blender. Huge, it's like a 0. 0.01 release difference, but a huge uh, upgrade in general, because again, it makes it a genuinely useful tool. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of this kind of workflow and modeling in something like Magic CSG. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.